Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel and I got another recap for you guys. Married at First Sight, this time Boston, season 14, episode 8, Striking a Balance. And after watching this episode, it was a lot of imbalance going on. But before we unpack all of this drama, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications, set it to all so you can make sure that you receive every video that I upload. If you like the video, smash that like button and drop a comment down in the comment section below because I do like engaging with my subbies. So we're going to talk about this. We have the couples meeting back up with family members with and friends uh, with their first housewarming as they've been back in Boston as a couple after the honeymoon. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting to say the least of what we got to unpack because they're definitely trying to blend their lives together, um, trying to match everything. And we got to talk about this group outing that gets real crazy when one couple get into a heated exchange. So without further ado, let's jump into this recap. So the first couple we're going to talk about is Olaja one and Katina. So O meets with one of his married friends for some advice on the status of the relationship. Now you guys remember Pastor Cal gave him the advice to go ahead and consummate the marriage. But he's definitely still feeling kind of nervous about, you know, consummating the marriage too early. He also is still not letting go of his desire to have, you know, the whole situation with Katina and cooking. Now, I will say that as much as folks had some confusion last episode with Olajuwon saying that, you know, him cooking breakfast every morning because some people was like, well, I thought he said he was going to begin to. We actually see in this episode he is cooking breakfast. So he did say last week that he does cook breakfast every day for the two of them. And that was no exception in this episode. So let's talk about them meeting with her friends. Now, she met with her friends to dish about, oh, her friend reveals quite a few things when she discovered after meeting him the first time around. Now, according to what, you know, the friend tells her that he has never seriously dated a black woman, Katina immediately jumps in and defends her husband and says pretty much she didn't see that as a big deal. Now, they did, well, she did speak on the after party and to clarify this up because it's a lot of rift going on in social media about this particular subject. Whether or not he's ever dated a black woman, ever messed with a black woman, ever dealt with a black woman. And I'm going to let you hear what she had to say and then we'll be back. I feel like, okay, so he had made the same comment to me um basically that he had um never been in a relationship with a black woman that's how it was played to me and um he said that but he's messed with black women before so for me when he said it it was just like okay but my friend you know they're very protective of me of course so when you're meeting strangers and they don't know you and you're a black man and they hear like i've never been with a black woman they're of course naturally they're gonna side eye you and right. be like so what that means you like black women or not can i say this any black woman who a black man is like i've never dated you they're gonna look at him a little crazy yeah but in all fairness it doesn't seem like elijah one has seriously dated anyone really before you you know this is his first serious relationship yeah so has this happened to elijah one a lot in terms of people maybe not getting the best first impression yeah i feel like he has a personality that's very big okay and it's either you like him or you don't mm -hmm. so clearly your friends didn't have the best first impression so pretty much to sum up everything that she was saying um, he really never seriously dated anybody in the past. Or I would say not only that, never was in a relationship in the past. This is his first relationship. And she's her first, of course, and only person that he's dated in a committed relationship. So 
It's not that he has never dated or been with a black woman. He never been in a serious relationship with one. If at all. So I want to clear that up because there's folks going around in circles about this. It's became an all out drag out conversation on social media. I like to let you guys hear it straight from their mouths. Not an interpretation, not people transmitting things through their own personal emotions. I want you guys to hear what exactly she had to say. So I want to put that out there. But um, they keep it pretty interesting the rest of the night. Um, They had their housewarming. They had a ton of chicken. Chicken looked good. And I think they claimed that they cooked it. So either way, they cooked. Um... During the party, they split up with their friends. They gave each other, um, significant other, each advice. And I got to say with Katina, she's definitely very patient. Obviously, there's more behind the scenes that we don't see with these two because the connection is there. He absolutely adores his wife and he knows where her boundaries is. A lot of people say, oh, she's just too patient. She's too easy. She's too cooperative. She set boundaries. He just don't overstep them. He tries to push them, but he, she definitely knows where to stop, and he does stop. So, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what happens with these two. But let's move on to our next couple. Okay, next up is Mark and Lindsay. So Mark visits his best friend and pretty much shares how he's definitely still on the fence about about Lindsay. On one hand, he loves how supportive and caring she is because especially when she's trying to be a mama bear, she definitely looks out and tries to take care of him. On the other side of this, he's still struggling with her blunt personality. Um, They definitely have had some challenges and, you know, even throughout all of this up and down, we did see her kind of help him clean out the house when the whole bed bug situation happened. And she's definitely been trying to be there. However, um, we do see at this bowling out uh, outing um, where this whole thing happens between her and Katina. And she made a comment about you have to have conflict first before you get into intimacy. And it kind of threw some folks off. And then, of course, Katina made a facial expression where she rolled her eyes. And this is where Lindsay started asking why Katina is making the faces and rolling her eyes. And Katina pretty much told her, you know, you know not to talk to me. You stay over there. And Mark didn't like it. And so what we saw a little bit later on is the whole situation of Mark telling her why did you have to go there why did you have to say anything and she felt that mark wasn't protecting her now i will say that this is a lot of boil over that came from early on because we only got to see a small snippet of it but the rest came out especially on a previous episode of the after party where you know Lindsay pretty much had been poking the bear at them more than once And according to the after party on this recent episode, we did hear Chris even say that this has been a continuing issue with both Mark and Lindsay throughout the two weeks that they've been together because they both call him to talk to about the other. So he hears about it all the time. I mean, Mark is calling him about Lindsay. Lindsay's calling him about Mark. And it's just back and forth. And it boiled over so much so that when she was with production, because at this point, Mark was over the conversation, the argument that they had. And she started telling him, you better go home to your mama and all this kind of stuff. She went in the bathroom and pretty much had a, a lash out meltdown where she's screaming and yelling and production is just recording all of this for consumption instead of calming her down. They wanted to get it all on audio 
everything from the fact of his roach infested house he needs to go back to and the fact that him making 60k is not enough money and that he is definitely not satisfying her in the bedroom and talking about how small his genitals are and i mean it was just a rant that went way left and i mean she's infuriated She's definitely infuriated. And they keep having these emotional ups and downs because they had one in the honeymoon. And then the next day we saw them having fun. And then we saw what happened last night episode. And the next episode we saw previews. They're back go-kart racing with each other, having a good time. It's toxic. Very much so. So um, I don't understand... He obviously is biting his tongue because, of course, if he kind of comes back, people going to come for him being a man talking to her a certain way. However, she's having a meltdown and she feels free to do it. And she pretty much wants to be done. She don't want to come out the bathroom. None of that. These two obviously are both strong personalities. I think Lindsay's personality overpowers his. And so he can't deal with it. And I don't think he's ever used to dealing with that because the per- usually he is the stronger personality in the, I guess, coupling, friendship, relationship. But I, I just honestly don't see this as a future uh, relationship that could work. Um, and then Mark, I guess, wants to her to dim her personality. And of course, she's not doing that. She don't feel supported. She feels that Mark should have taken her side with the Katina thing. And I mean, it's it's just a mess. It's a mess. But my thing is, people are going to make facial reactions. I mean, should Katina have responded? Some people question that. Should Lindsay have asked? Some people question that. The whole thing just went left. And even though Katina and Elijah and the rest of them were off in the closet doing their own th- on the closet in the corner doing their own thing, that still led her to take it to a new level, which she didn't have to because she tried to literally verbally destroy her husband. So, like I say, I don't see a future for these two, but we'll have to continue to see what the rest of the season brings. So, let's move on to another tirade in our next couple. Which leads us to Noe and Steve. So Steve is still feeling pressure since the conversation with Noe about his employment status. Now, he doesn't want to work a traditional nine to five, but he does want to see, you know, or ease, I would say, her apprehension about it. So they did... um, have a a conversation about their previous conversation with Pastor Cal. Steve wants his wife to try to, you know, understand his thoughts on life while she's kind of wondering if he, he even has a plan put together, you know, and that's definitely frustrating. Um, the thing is, is that, and he was also on the after party, And he said that he has enough resources and contacts and everything else. He has savings. He's doing pretty well, you know, for himself to be able to put him in a position where um, he can do what he did and continue to, you know, work self-employed. Unlike Noy, who is a nine to five worker, I think all she wants to know is what's the plan, though, not per se whether he's going to go get a job or not. She want to know, okay, if I'm working and you're self-employed, what's the plan? Chris also chimed in on the after party as well. And go over and check that out. I know I'm kind of dropping things or kind of mixing the recaps together. But Chris said he was originally a few years back employed with a company. Uh, He left that particular place of employment and now he is self-employed as a real estate professional. And just like Steve, there is no punching in the clock. There is no, um, you know, waiting for a paycheck every two weeks. It's based on sales in his case, whether he lists a house that sells 
or get a buyer who purchases a home. He still is, you know, of course, waiting for payments based on the work that he does. So he totally understands it. But he also positioned himself financially that he even did exactly what Steve said. He actually said that he actually slept in the back of his truck and toured the Northeast for a few months before he decided to get back to what he was doing in real estate. So if you have the money and you already know that this is something that you can do and you're still financially sound, it's not an issue. And it seems that people are so locked in into nine to five, nine to five, nine to five, that there are other ways and other streams of income that people can utilize versus punching a clock. The only thing is, is that with self-employment, Is the consistency of your money coming in, the savings of it all, and having a plan. And I think once he kind of, you know, get that secured for Noe to let her know that, look, don't worry about it. Here's the plan. This is what we can do to make sure that we're good. And I think she'll be okay with that, you know. And it's just unfortunate that I know I see in social media that some folks is just, he ain't got no job. He ain't got no job. And we just talked about the whole thing with Lindsay and and her husband, Mark, where she was still complaining about the fact that he made 60K a year on his job. He got a job, and I also saw that in the people debating about that. Oh, well, that's not enough. Is anything going to ever be enough? No job a job making 60k whatever the thing is is making sure that you're financially sound that's what it comes down to and that you have a plan but let's talk about the plan noi ended up having after noodle gate so noi and steve decide to prepare some homemade dishes from both their cultures for their guests for this housewarming party that was coming up And, you know, pretty much everything looks good. They definitely tried to put effort into the food that they prepared. However, uh, Noi and Steve's friends did pull them aside, you know, separately to get their takes on things. They obviously have great chemistry, but they definitely have different things of what they feel about life. But Noi and Steve get into this argument over gluten-free noodles so this is the first time she makes dinner for the two of them steve put noodles on that he prefer also besides the ones that she had already you know placed on the stove well he came back in the kitchen he's irritated that his noodles were overcooked and she didn't bother to check on them all we see shortly after that noi picks up her bag she picks up her dog and then she pretty much just storms out of the house. Um, he tried to contact her several times to apologize. She didn't respond. Um, the, I mean, all this about noodles. And he was like, you could at least just check on my noodles. You know, hey, I'm trying to. But nope, she left. She disappeared. And I mean, A lot of folks is like, oh, yeah, I know it's got to be about his working situation. Really? You need to have a conversation. It's noodles, for God's sake. And it's just not okay that you get up and walk out the house and disappear where your husband don't know where you're going. All because he said, hey, you could have looked and turned, you know, turned my noodles off or whatever the situation is. But she did show back up the next day. It looking like she was the one that was angry when she was the one that pretty much ghosted him. Um, but she explains that she felt that he was being rude, complaining about the noodles. Okay, but what about what you just did all night? Um, he explains why her behavior is unhealthy and immature. She, mm, she kind of admitted begrudgingly that it wasn't a good idea to bring her frustration to social media because she made a post and put it out there. And, of course, he knew that exactly was about him. 
And, uh, you know, that's just crazy. I think that's a little petty for her instead of communicate and say, hey, let's just talk about these noodles. No, she took off and ran, you know, and it's just so unfortunate that that's what she should decide to do. You ghost this man. You don't answer the phone. You post something to friends and family. Plus, his family is also followers of yours. So you pretty much put this cryptic message out there in front of the world to see instead of you talking to your husband. That, that, don't, that don't sound too mature. So, you know, hopefully they move forward from this whole thing. But even at that bowling alley, you, t you can still tell by her facial expressions that there was a little bit of reservation between those two. So I hope they can get past this. But we'll have to continue to see as this uh, season sun continue so hopefully they can make it through this let's move on to our next couple so it's jasmina and michael and michael meets with his sister to discuss the current state of their marriage um although he definitely got some real good advice from pastor cal they still got a lot to work on i mean his sister pretty much advised him to get to know his wife and earn her trust uh, Jasmina, however, is guarded, but that doesn't mean that her walls can't come down eventually. She also meets with a friend of hers, and she goes over some of the communications that she had, issues that she had with Michael. And especially, it was so funny that her friend actually said, when she said, Michael always want to be right. And then the friend was like, that sounds just like you. And she was like, no, no, that's not me. And she was like, well, most of the time, that is you. And she was like, well, most of the time, I'm right. So she kind of told off on herself. Okay. But, you know, right on this particular episode, they were pretty much in, you know, we didn't get a lot with them. I just think they need to make some compromises. They also need to work on their communication styles. And if they do, they will work. But so far, they said that they were doing pretty good so far in this episode. So we'll see what happened next with them. Let's move on with a couple that I thought was already gone. Alyssa and Chris. So with Alyssa and Chris, Chris decided to call his mom and break the news about the divorce. And you can tell as he's telling his mom the story, his mom feels bad about what her son had to pretty much endure. She does see through the BS and thinks that Alyssa was only looking for 15 minutes of fame. Yeah, that whole thing was a hot mess to happen on TV for so long. And especially how production kind of wanted to push this out, even by telling Chris at one point to kind of give her some more time. No thanks. Um, Alyssa meet with one of her friends and discuss her, the issue that her marriage is over uh, in regards to Chris. And much like everybody else, she really, uh, all of the accusations and the character assassination that she tried to do with him is just crazy. But um, Alyssa did meet with one of her friends and discuss the demise of her marriage that she had with Chris on the on the other side of this and she lies about her time with her husband it's almost like she didn't even realize a camera crew is following her around um she doesn't understand that there's video evidence of everything that she had said about him uh, I mean, it's crazy, and I'm glad her friend must realize how she is because the friend was like, well, I kind of wish I had a meta myself so I can kind of get my own opinion. So she obviously knows how Alyssa is and how she can kind of twist the story. But that's why receipts used in a good way can definitely come in handy. And in this case, it came in handy because she claimed... Even to the group, when they sat out at the bowling alley, you know, she was talking about how I did my best and I gave all I could and I gave 100%. And production made sure that they saw every freaking clip of her saying, I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to be. He's coming over here. 
keep him from coming over here. So for somebody to try to do something with somebody, the evidence show otherwise. So sorry, Alyssa, it doesn't work. You've been exposed thanks to production. And usually I'm not a fan of the production team on this show as the many recaps that I've done. But in this instance, they definitely did the right thing. Because she was lying all over the place. All over the place. Now, I, you know, I mean, you can't dispute that. And everybody that's watching this in real time, because she probably went back after filming and painted this whole story, a smear campaign on this man. And now everybody in the world can see exactly that they exposed you. So... It's unfortunate. It was lies on top of lies on top of more lies. And yeah, her gaslighting, they turned the fuse out when they showed all the receipts. So I hope you enjoyed this recap of Married at First Sight Boston season 14, episode eight. And until the next video, like, comment and subscribe. And we will definitely see you in the next one. Bye.